This is a set of tutorials on dynamic system modeling and control. The purpose of the tutorials is to serve as uh, the instructional material for approximately one course at the 400 level in the area of dynamic system modeling and control. Uh, this particular tutorial, the first one, uh, focuses on introducing you to the system dynamics discipline, uh, specifically to help you see the breadth of the discipline and also to help you understand which uh, prerequisite material you might need to brush up on as you dive into the later tutorials. Uh, my name is Hossam Fathi and uh, I'm happy to be going through this tutorial with you. Um, so going on to the tutorial goals, the tutorial has four goals. First of all, to motivate the need for studying the dynamic systems discipline. Secondly, to introduce some of the key concepts and goals of this discipline, of the system dynamics discipline. Thirdly, uh, to highlight the breadth of the discipline and particularly just how many applications of system dynamics exist in various domains. And finally, to emphasize the mathematical foundations of system dynamics so that if you do need to go back and brush up on some necessary background material, uh, you can do that with ease. So in order to understand what the system dynamics discipline is, I've borrowed an image here uh, from Wikimedia Commons of uh, a bunch of people ice skating, okay? And uh, this figure helps us understand what the dynamic system dynamics discipline is because we can think about these ice skaters and we can ask ourselves the question, what are the dynamics governing their motion as they ice skate? Can we build simulation models of these dynamics? Can we take these mathematical models and simulate them on a computer so that we understand and see how these um, ice skaters move with time. If we build simulation models of these ice skaters, what parameters do we put in these models? Um, for example, what are the masses of the ice skaters? What are the inertial properties of the ice skaters? Can we figure out these parameters a priori, either from knowledge of the ice skaters' anthropometry or from direct measurements of, say, their mass? If we can't determine these parameters a priori, can we perhaps estimate and identify these parameters from experimental observations of the ice skating process? If we build an ice skater's model and we simulate this model and we analyze this model, can we use this model to judge the stability of the ice skater? Specifically, while they're skating, are they going to are they going to be able to maintain a desired skating trajectory or are they going to fall? How is the motion of the ice skaters affected by the forces and loads acting on the ice skaters? How do these forces and loads result in acceleration and velocity? How do they affect the motion of the ice skaters? What does the ice skater need to do to control his or her motion? Okay, What kind of actions do they need to take? What kind of forces do they need to exert through their muscles? If they control their motion, are they controlling their motion through a feedback process where they use the sensors in their bodies, say their visual sensors and their vestibular sensors, to stabilize themselves? Or are they using feet forward control where they essentially memorize a trajectory of motion and they follow it uh, without using their sensors? How much feedback do they need to use? How much feet forward control do they, do they need to use? And how robust is their motion to uncertainties in the surrounding environment? So, for example, if an ice skater is used to skating with a particular pair of skates, and then they switch skates, and they get an older pair or a rustier pair, or if the properties of the ice itself change, if it gets a little wetter, how does this affect their ability to continue to ice skate proficiently? What sensors do the ice skaters need to use in order to control their motion? What if uh, they ice skate blindfolded so that they don't have the visual sensors anymore? Are they still going to be able to skate effectively? What are they benefiting? What, what are they gaining by having visual sensors, vestibular sensors, pressure sensors in their bodies, etc.? Okay? What kind of actuators do they need for ice skating? What if we um, deny them the use of some of these actuators? So, for example, what if we uh, put a cast around the ice skater's leg, left leg or right leg? How much does this affect the ice skater's ability um, to, to skate proficiently? These are the kind of questions that we ask in the system dynamics discipline. We focus on modeling dynamic systems, analyzing dynamic systems, specifically from the perspective of stability, robustness, performance, 
um, ability to achieve certain goals like ability to skate a certain velocity or in a certain direction and the degree to which all of this is influenced by control both feet forward and feet back. This is a nice analogy for the controls discipline and the dynamics discipline, the system dynamics discipline. But of course, the system dynamics discipline has applications far beyond ice skating. As a matter of fact, we can think of the system dynamics discipline as a knowledge tree. Uh, it's a very traditional analogy in a lot of disciplines. And the branches of the tree represent the different applications of the system dynamics discipline. You can think about an aerospace engineer trying to design an autopilot for an airplane to keep it flying at a particular altitude in a particular heading. And that is one application of the system dynamics uh, discipline. You can think about an automotive engineer trying to design a cruise controller for a car to keep the velocity of the car constant even as it goes uphill and downhill. And that's another application of the system dynamics discipline. You can think about an electrical engineer uh, solving the very interesting and very challenging problem of making sure that the electricity you get from the power grid uh, through the socket in your home is provided at a constant frequency and a constant voltage even as you plug and unplug different appliances into the grid and that's a very interesting application problem of system dynamics. You can think about a biologist or a bioengineer trying to understand how the human brain functions and how the different feedback pathways within the brain allow it to to regulate the process of thinking, allow it to regulate the thought process, how the synaptic connections within the brain provide feedback pathways within the brain and that is another application of system dynamics. You can be a population scientist interested in questions such as um, how much does hunting affect the population of deer in a forest and that's an application of system dynamics. Um, you can be a kinesiologist or a system biologist interested in questions such as, for instance, if you're a kinesiologist, um, how does the control of human gait affect stability of gait? How does the human body regulate gait and posture? And those are applications of system dynamics. You can even be an economist interested in trying to understand, say, the dynamic impact of taxation policy on the growth and, and shrinking of the economy and that question can be addressed using the tools of system dynamics. Computer scientists have actually used the tools of system dynamics to solve interesting problems such as for example can we model the dynamics of traffic on the internet, network traffic and the dynamics of congestion on the internet. Even video gamers um, employ system dynamics to build realistic video games that simulate the physics of real physical systems. Um, mathematicians are interested in system dynamics because from a mathematical perspective there are some very interesting challenges to solve within the system dynamics discipline. Tools that need to develop, to be developed to understand stability, robustness, etc. If you're an electrochemist you might be interested in using system dynamics to understand the process of charging, discharging, um, and uh, you know using a battery and how this process affects the dynamic the dynamics of the chemical reactions inside the battery how the charging and discharging of a battery affects its degradation for instance all of these are applications of system dynamics in a very broad sense and all of them belong to a broad discipline that we refer to as systems engineering now of course this discipline has a lot of applications but it also has underneath all of these applications some common mathematical foundations. The basic mathematical foundations of system dynamics are the tools of calculus, number one, the tools of differential equations, number two, linear algebra plays a big role in the analysis of at least linear dynamic systems, and complex number three, a theory plays a big role in the system dynamics discipline as we're going to see as you embark on a course in system dynamics it helps to brush up on these subjects and make sure that you have the strength in these areas to be able to push further in the system dynamics discipline. So what have we learned from this tutorial? We've learned that the system dynamics discipline is needed if you want to understand questions like stability, robustness, performance, and control of dynamic systems. Some of the key goals and concepts in the system dynamics discipline have been outlined so we've seen how the system dynamics discipline asks questions like uh, what sensors do you need in order to control a system? How robust is a system? 
we have also highlighted the breadth of the discipline and the sheer number of applications of system dynamics to different engineering domains and different domains in general. And we've emphasized the mathematical foundations of the system dynamics discipline, um, primarily so that you can brush up on these mathematical foundations uh, as you dive deeper into this course. That concludes this tutorial. The next tutorial asks the question, what is a system? And what makes a system dynamic? We're throwing around these words, system and dynamic, all the time. But what do they really mean? Thank you very much, and I look forward to the coming tutorial.